Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about two different but very interrelated aspects to poetry. Uh, two things that most poems have to some degree or another, and two of the things that really make poetry poetry instead of prose. And these two things are imagery and symbolism. And let me talk a little bit about the difference, because the difference is important. It's easy to confuse them. Uh, imagery or an image in a poem is trying to make you see a picture. It's trying to, uh, to get you in your mind a picture that you can't get out of your mind. And it's going to use a lot of sensory um, language. It's going to talk about smells and tastes and feels. Uh, it's going to try to use every way possible to, to get you to experience the image that it's trying to portray. Now, that image can also represent something else that's important to the poem. A symbol, on the other hand, is a concrete thing in a poem that, that represents something else. And what's primarily important is the thing that it represents. And symbols can be either common symbols that are used in poetry, like a river or a tree or a rose or an apple. You know, if, if you're if you're reading uh, uh, the the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, uh, apples mean something, and if somebody uses an apple, that means something. But sometimes poets invent symbols themselves. They they say here is something, and it's going to be a symbol of something else. John Donne, who we're not reading this semester, but he is an excellent example of this. He will uh, he has a poem. Uh, called a valediction forbidding morning where he talks about a compass and he makes the compass a symbol for a husband and wife and their relationship to each other that it has never been before. But let's talk about uh, imagery first. And the poem that I want to use to talk about Im imagery is uh, the from your syllabus, uh, Randall Gerald's poem, The Death of a Ball Turret Gunner. And uh, there are actually there are two levels of imagery in this poem that are trying to get to what it means. Uh, first, let's read the poem. It's on page. It's on page five hundred and ninety, and this is a this is a common anthology piece poem because it does such a good job of showing what imagery does. Uh, so we read the poem. From my mother's sleep I fell into the state, and I hunched in its belly till my wet fur froze. Six miles from earth, loosed in its dream of life, I woke to black flack and the nightmare fighters. When I died, they washed me out of the turret with a hose. So this is a nice, cheery World War II poem. And uh, the first thing you have to know to understand the poem is what a ball turret gunner is. And I'm going to put up a picture here picture here uh, from Life magazine of a ball turret gunner in World War II. Probably the most dangerous thing you could be in World War II other than infantry man storming the beaches of Normandy. Uh, the, the ball is just a little bubble that's, that's beneath uh, the main fuselage of, of a uh, B-17 bomber. And inside the ball turret gunner had to just hunch in, could barely fit in, and uh, and that person's job was to fire the gun at other planes that were coming to attack the bomber. Bomber. Uh, it was d dangerous for a number of reasons. One, there was absolutely no place you could go. You you had just enough room to sit there and fire the gun. So uh, if you got hit, there was just nothing you could do. Uh, secondly, you were only protected by glass. The gunner had to see uh, all the way around in order to be able to do the gunning. And so you just had a glass window between you and a whole bunch of enemy fighters. And you were trying to shoot them, and they were trying to shoot you. And you were usually the first person they were trying to shoot. Uh, so many ball turret gunners got killed even when the other members of the bombing mission survived. Um, so that's, that's the, the basic image of the poem, is the ball turret gunner hunched up, curled up inside of the turret, and uh, operating the gun, and, and very often dying in the process. 
But what Jarrell is doing here is mapping that image, which he creates very vividly. Notice the the variety of, of uh, different sensory words here. He hunched in its belly till my wet fur froze. He talks about it feeling its sensory perception. Uh, but what he's doing is creating another image, and, and that's the image of an embryo inside of a womb. And uh, he starts you know, he starts it very clearly that he's talking about uh, this being a kind of pregnancy because the ball turret is a, a very womb-like thing, and you have to crawl into it almost like you are an embryo. Uh, so he starts, from my mother's sleep, I fell into the state. So that's a, that's a birth imagery. And he talks about hunching in its belly till my wet fur froze. Oh, and the state. He's talking about the state. Uh, Gerald was a pacifist. The state simply means the government. So, so he's saying that here was a birth. And uh, I came right from my mother into the belly of the state, which was this ball turret. Six miles from Earth, loosed from its dream of life, I woke to black flack and the nightmare of fighters. And then that last devastating last line, when I died, they washed me out of the turret with a hose. So this isn't a normal birth. This is a pregnancy, and it is an abortion, because he dies in the womb. And the, the powerful imagery of connecting this ball turret to uh, a mother's womb tells us everything we need to know about the poem. This is a poem about a young 18 or 19 year old, somebody barely starting life. As soon as he begins his life, he is drafted by the state, put into this ball turret uh, for reasons that he doesn't understand or have any ability to understand. And, uh, and there's nothing he can do. And ultimately, his life uh, becomes an aborted pregnancy. It becomes uh, something that that he, before he's even born, he dies, and then that, when I died, they washed me out of the turret with a hose, is meant to, to give you a, a powerful image that you won't forget of a, a young per person who never really lived because they were taken by the state and, uh, and in a, in a metaphorical way, forced back into the womb and aborted while still in the womb. So that's an image. Now let's talk about a symbol, which is a little bit of a different thing. 